What's up guys? So hopefully you guys all had a good weekend. Um, today, maybe tomorrow, for you guys today, uh, we're going to be diving into this Lingenfelter 1994 C4 Corvette. Um, it's got a supercharged uh, 383, might be a 384, something like that. It's been gone over again. Uh, originally it was done by Lingenfelter, however we took the engine apart and actually forged everything. Um, it had a set of forged pistons in it, it had forged rods, but it had a stock cast crank that was like heavily worked over and knife edged. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, kind of to go over the whole gist of the car, um, he brought it to me with a uh, met some bad main bearings. So we ended up taking care of that. We put a forged crank in it at that time. He broke the engine in uh, and we are actually taking care of the last remaining bits uh, that are going on with this car. So it was on the dyno, it made uh, 500 and I think 20 rear wheel horsepower, but then we were running out of fuel. We're gonna do, we got a larger fuel pump to go in it, new fuel filter, and uh, just basically going over the fuel side. And we should be good on fuel when we're all said and done. One thing you may notice, got a haircut. My hair is probably a little messy right now, but um, my wife ended up cutting it. What? Nice. Thank you to the uh, quarantine thing. Got a little bit of a buzz action. Um, yeah, so it's nice. My hats um, actually fit my head again. So I've had long hair for like the longest time. But, uh... Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a peek under the hood. Let's see what we got. So last time you saw this car, the blow off was sitting over in this corner. Uh, Jeff, when he did the dyno, while he had it, we figured we might as well uh, let him handle some of the things that he thought this car might need. He put a larger blow valve on it uh, while it was over there and bigger injectors did the dyno tuning on it. Oh, he also, I believe some of these flanges, even from Lingenfelter, they didn't have any beads on them. So he welded a bead on it. Uh, we were able to shorten this pipe up because it originally had the IET sensor. He ended up welding a bung in the main intercooler assembly right here um welds look pretty good so we got a thread in iet so no more boost leaks um so now we're just basically wrapping this thing up um, i'll show you some of the parts we got for it all right so here are a couple of the parts we got a replacement fuel filter for it should be plenty for now i don't think we need to go with any crazy and stuff Right here, what do we have here? We've got a, this is, yeah, this is the Walbro 450 fuel pump. So, this is going to go in tank. Um, I'm not sure what it has on it right now. It is a little bit louder, but I think the pump in it's tired. So, we do have that new Walbro to go in that baby. Even came with, uh, looks like some wiring pigtails and all that so you know we'll definitely try to use as much of the thicker gauge wiring as possible if not all of it so we've got that let's see up here we have what's in this box are these it's getting new hinge push hinge bushings uh for the doors because uh the doors are a little worn out so getting a little bit into that restoration aspect i mean the car is pretty it's got some age on it now. This is uh, right here. We've got a Racetronics. Now you could go ahead and make these kits yourself, but you know it's nice to have them all done up with weather pack connectors and all that. This basically will plug into the factory fuel pump wiring, and you run another additional wire, uh, power and ground, to activate a relay to get voltage straight off the alternator. So we'll be able to run 14 volts to it. Um, I'm not really a fan of those boost pump things. Um, they're really kind of like a band-aid, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, Racetronics makes some really nice stuff. Um, I think you may be able to get something like this from Caspers. Uh, of course, you know, no, none of these guys are sponsors. It's not a paid video by these guys. Um, but I do use this stuff on my own car. You know, it's pretty solid. You know, it's already wrapped in weather packs. Um, I ins I've installed these on a dozen cars, you know, probably in the past, I don't know five years so they're nice so on to the clutch we've got a ram dual disc i think it's a yeah, it's a nine and a half inch clutch so this thing is gonna drive like butter hopefully uh, it's supposed to so 
what we got here is a dual disc and it's got a massive steel billet flywheel. Um, I ordered this zero balance because we're all internally balanced on the engine. And um, yeah, this is just going to basically take care of any clutch issues he has. It's going to make the car very nice to drive. And um, yeah, I think that this is going to wrap it up. This car is going to be 100% back together and driving. It's going to be operating at a perfect level. So better than it ever has. So he'll be able to use that forged motor to its full potential. And um, you know, all these mods combined are going to keep this package together and allow him to enjoy his car. Um, so I think uh, we're going to have to get started on this. So the first things you want to do is remove the filler gate and then you're going to want to clean up any debris you're going to maybe want to put a rag inside the filler neck just so you don't get any dust in there if you don't clean it um, i like to blow it off around the gasket area with a with compressed air just so we don't have any debris falling back into the tank these fuel pumps are really easy to change out especially if you're just changing like a pump or something it can be actually pretty expensive so um yeah, definitely nice. Um, I've never done a 450 in a C4, but it's, this one in fact has an aftermarket regulator on the rail, so I don't think it should be an issue with it. Uh, with a factory fuel pressure regulator, it may not be advisable because it may overpower it. Um, however, this setup, I have to find out what manufacturer that regulator is, uh, but it didn't have any issues with it. So here we are pulling the pump out, just be real careful. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you have room for the float to snake out of there. So there's the float coming out. So now we're gonna bring this over to the bench. You can kind of see that there's a white plastic tray everything sits in inside the tank, so you're gonna to wanna to maintain that. So here we're gonna remove the gasket, it's followed by the float. Now the float's held on with two small tabs that lock it into the sensor. So you're just gonna to wanna to be really careful. You don't wanna put any force on that because it's got small fingers on the fuel level sensor itself that can be easily damaged. So just be really careful with that. Get it off there as soon as you get the pump out. Uh, that way you don't have any accidents. So we can set that aside. Now we're gonna take this uh, pump apart. It's basically held in with an inflatable sealing um, diaphragm type mechanism. So we're not gonna use that. Um, that has potential to leak. Right here you can see there is a size restriction that it actually uses to get that seal. So we're actually going to remove that with a set of pipe cutters. Now you may not be able to get a full revolution, but if we spin the tool around, we should be able to get 360 degrees of a cut. So here is how I ended up doing it. I would cut it a little bit, I would spin the tool around 180, just so we could get a full circumference cut on this. Now the point of this is this uh, small neck down situation is just going to act as a restriction. I compared the hose that the Walro 450 comes with and it's actually more closer resembling the larger size tubing that's coming into the pump housing. Now if you even wanted to increase the size even more you could always bend up your own tube in a larger diameter and use some brazing around the pass through connection up top. Now, um, this isn't necessary. Uh, I think um, this setup right here, this pump is good for like 750 um, naturally aspirated. So it may be closer to 700 or 680 uh, with a with boost, especially if you have a boost reference regulator. Um, so here you can see the restriction. Look how tiny that one is. So we really opened it up. So we're just basically trying to eliminate any kind of bottlenecks. Another note, I actually did flare the end of the uh, pump housing just to make sure that the rubber tubing that the Walbro comes with doesn't have any chance of slipping off of there because it is going to be pushing a lot of pressure. I think the pressure in this regulator when it was tuned was set up to 60 PSI. So also uh, we're going to go in here and wire up the pump now. Um, one thing, now you could drill a new hole and run a rubber grommet and then uh, just uh, you know make sure you don't have any chafing, but that's kind of risky. The factory wiring is pretty heavy gauge, even though it is somewhat thin. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem providing enough amps to this pump. Now if I were to go to some duals, I would probably like to put a bulkhead fitting through the top, just something smooth so it wouldn't pinch the wires, but this thing's going to work out just fine. I don't like using heat shrink in there because you never know how it's going to hold up to the ethanol content. So what I end up using is just the supplied butt, butt splice connections. 
Now those are pretty much set up where they can handle the fuel. Now you definitely want to stagger your connections just so if one of those uh, sleeves on the butt splice connectors comes loose, you're not going to have any arcing inside the tank. So now that we got that all wrapped up, we can throw the pump back in the car and let me wrap it up. All right, so quick little recap. Got the pump installed. Um, and then uh, looking into this uh, supercharger kit from your boys over there. Um, I had to, they actually cut this line short because they actually looped it back down underneath where the rear plate goes. And there was a tag, um, a bracket mounted there and a small bracket there. And that was housing this guy right here from uh, Vortec. So this is the old way of doing it without actually taking the factory pump out. They probably didn't have um, high horsepower in-tank pumps even available at the time. All right, so here's the Racetronic kit. Um, this end right here goes straight to the alternator. It's fused, 20 amp. So we gotta run that to the front and then this will sit in the back. Check that out, weatherproof connection. Ooh, nice. Foolproof, Racetronics branded relays. Hmm. So we got the relay, we got the ground terminal right on it, so we'll have to find a place to make that live. So yeah, we've got one end basically activates the relay. That's the factory wiring for the fuel pump. And then the other end, the big boy end, that plugs into the in-tank pump. So we'll be able to get straight 14 and a half volts to the fuel pump. We got a bunch of zip ties in the kit as well. Oh, look at that. These guys. Oh, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't have. Oh, look at that. They even give me a bolt. All right, you guys. So, uh, just pretty much wrapped up the Racetronics install. Let me show you what I got going on. Right here is the fuse. Uh, we tied it in and we're able to use the factory cover for the alternator. It loops under, goes in through the fuse, back around, around the wire down here, follow this wire loom, and then straight down on the outside of the steering shaft to make sure we don't have any clearance issues with that so let me raise the car up and i'll show you underneath all right underneath the car we've got the wire coming down here we just basically followed this brake line ties up under here around there and then it goes up over the axle don't worry i'm going to cut these zip ties up over the axle behind that fender just in case he has a tire that blows out and it kicks out over here and then I, since we're not running a spare tire on this one, we just use this ground. Um, if you want to run a spare tire, there's also another ground over here you could tie into. You would just have to maybe extend the ground wire. This is the ground wire. Um, we got that grounded out the chassis. They came with uh, lube, so we got that installed. The bolt that it had actually was the right thread for there. So that worked out great. And now we've just got the wire here, so we just need to route it up into the tank, and then we can plug it in. All right, to the back of the car, we got the wires ran. Just need to hook this one up to the fuel pump and this one up to the factory wire harness. All right, we're plugged up. We got the locks in the connectors so they can't ever come undone. And um, now we can prime it, turn, put the battery back on and make sure that this thing's making noise. Oh, if we had the key. Whoa. Don't get excited here. No fuel leaks. Got it warming up right now. Fuel pump's working.
ended up tying. Yeah, okay, okay, everything was fine. Thanks, thanks. Great job, Ricky. Good job in the car. Ricky...